What is up, Nerds? Crash here with the start of Chapter 2 of the series, How to Make TF2 Maps, brought to you by TF2Maps.net and Essentials.tf. In this chapter, we are going to focus on the underlying logic of building a TF2 map. By the end of this chapter, you will know how to create fully functioning spawn rooms with all the bells and whistles, be able to create the logic behind King of the Hill or Arena maps, and ultimately learn shortcuts for all of this. But before we can cut corners and make our lives easier, we need to understand how everything works. It's very easy to fall into the trap of using prefabs and various resources at our disposal to simply copy and paste our map into existence. But if you don't learn how each of these things are created, you won't be able to troubleshoot them down the road, modify them to fit your specific purpose, or even break the mold and come up with something entirely unique to your project. The main concept we're going to be learning today is the input output system, or I.O. for short. This system is how entities can communicate between each other in your map. For example, when you walk near a door, the invisible trigger brush you step inside is sending an output to the door telling it to open. When you leave that trigger, it sends another to tell it to close. So the first entity sends an output to the second, which receives it as an input and reacts accordingly. Each entity has its own series of inputs and outputs that it can receive or send. Some entities are simply back-end logic that you can't see or interact with directly in-game, but serve a purpose in your I.O., such as timers or relays. We'll go into those more in a future episode, though. The basic components you need to have entities interact is an entity that can send the output and a named entity that can receive it as an input. So let's try playing with this a little bit to get the hang of things. Since we can interact with this health pack sitting here by picking it up, and I know that I can send an output when it's touched, let's use it to trigger an event. Let's say we want to make this train disappear when we pick up the health, because reasons. You'll notice if you select the prop static, however, that we can't name it. That's because the entity itself is designed to be a very efficient, non-interactive object. So what we can do is select the entity class and change it to a prop dynamic. Prop dynamics are a bit more expensive on the engine, but they have a lot more power. They can be animated, moved around, enabled or disabled, or a whole slew of other things. Basically, if you want a prop to be targetable by the I.O. system, prop dynamic is what you're looking for. So now that we have this set, let's give our prop a name. We'll call it Train. Now we'll go back to our health pack and click on the Outputs tab on the top here. Down at the bottom, click on Add. This brings up a blank output that isn't set up to do anything just yet. The upper box shows you all the outputs that this entity currently has. The box below it is where you can edit them. The basic format for an output is what event causes it, what entity is targeted with the output, what the input that that entity will be receiving is, a parameter override if that input needs more information, such as like a skin change, if there will be a delay on the output from being sent, and last, if we want this output to fire only once and then delete itself or not. So looking at the possible outputs we have for this health pack via the drop-down menu, we can see that we have an option to send the output on player touch, so we'll pick that one. Then we'll move down to target entities named and type in train. This targets our train prop. Selecting the via this input drop-down, we can select what we want to happen to the train. We're going to make the train disappear when the health pack is picked up, so we'll select Disable. This disables the prop completely, including its collision. We don't have any parameters to change, so that box is just grayed out. We also want the train to disappear instantly, so we'll leave the delay at zero. And finally, we want to be able to fire this output more than once, so we'll leave fire only once unchecked. Hit apply, and that completes our first output setup. But to run over the logic just one last time, our output is on player touch, it's targeting the entity named train, and it's sending the input disable. Now for shits and giggles, let's make the ammo pack re-enable our train prop when it's picked up. So we'll select the ammo pack, go to outputs, hit add, the output will be on player touch again, the target will again be train, but this time we'll send the input enable. Hit apply, and now we should have the logic in place to enable and disable our train at will. So we'll give the map a quick compile and play with it a bit in-game. So now that we're in-game, we simply have to walk into our health pack and our train will dis... uh... shit. Oh yeah, duh, you have to be damaged to be able to pick up a health pack. So now that I've damaged myself... I can grab the health pack and the train disappears. Ooh, magic! Now when we pick up the ammo, it will also come back. So that's the basic idea of the input-output system. What the trigger is, what it's targeting, and what you want the target to do. Mind you, basically no map really does anything with health ammo packs triggering outputs. This was just a quick and easy way to show off the system using entities we already have on our test map. In the next episode, we're going to cover something a lot more useful to the average map. We're going to go over doors and filters. <laughs>